So now we're going to play around with histograms. Hello. Histogram is a type of bar chart. It's made when you have to group numbers together uh, to display them in order to kind of comprehend what's going on with the data. Uh, and it's usually for measured data, but it could be for other things. Uh, so it could be for data that you count. Um, and it's just usually for larger sets of data too. And here's a couple of examples. Hermiston home prices histogram. There were a few homes last year between, uh, I say, under $100,000. There were a lot more, 15 homes that ranged uh, above 100, up to 200,000, 200, 300,000, 300 to 400,000, and so on. So this gives me a display of what to expect. Most houses were between 100,000 and $400,000 in price. Here's another one where I researched a bunch of different mammals and how long they live. And there's a few mammals who live less than five years. There's eight mammals that live five to 10 years. There's 12 mammals that live 10 to 15 years and so on. So a histogram is a way of organizing data using groups. So we're gonna try that for this uh, Hermiston price data. We'll do it by hand and then later we'll try it with a computer. So in order to do it, I need some data and I need to know what the range of the data is and I have to decide how many groups I want. So here, the range of numbers has a maximum, now I put them in order for us, of 729,000.9 and then 52,009 was the low home price. So subtracting those two, what do we get? We get a 677,000 uh, space in between them. So we're gonna have to split that space up. Now the number of columns uh, in, a, in a chart like this, the number of groups, so we have our, oops, columns, if I could spell today. So columns usually we'll have somewhere between five and 20. And 20 is usually on the edge of too many. So some people just don't like to go up that high. They usually stop at like 15 columns. Uh, below five doesn't really help much either. So somewhere in between here. So let's suppose, come on, Penn. I'm gonna try eight columns. So I'm gonna group this data into eight. Uh, besides the number of columns and the range, I also need to know how many numbers there are. Sometimes that helps too. And uh, N is usually how many, and I have 49 home prices here. So I wanna take this distance, 677, that's from the, ma the min here to the max, and I wanna break it up into eight groups. So I'm gonna take that 677 and divide by eight. So calculator. 677 divided by eight, and that gives me a width of about 84. And usually I go for a nice number. So we could say, well, you know, let's just make it 100, right? That's kind of close. And that was related to the graph I had earlier. So the 100 makes sense because sometimes that's a 100,000 versus 200,000 might be a critical cutoff for people thinking about home prices. Could be a $50,000 cutoff. Uh, so we could have rounded that down to 50, in which case we would have, mm, I don't know, maybe 10 or 12 columns. <clears throat> What's the best way? It turns out there isn't one. There's just different options. So there's a lot of different histograms you can make. So let's say then for our groups, we're going to go with a width. So I was trying to estimate the width. So estimate width of each column. And usually what I do is I take the range of values and I divide by the number of columns that I want. And so that was 677 divided by eight. That gave me about 84, which I'm gonna round up to 100. And then we pick a convenient starting point. So going from zero to 100 and then beyond kind of makes sense. So then I have to then uh, start setting that up. So I'm gonna make a table over here and I'm gonna have my groups for the column on one side, and I'm, then I'm just gonna count up home prices over here. So my groups are gonna go zero to 100, 
and then 101 to 200, and then 201 to 300, and I keep doing this till I get to contain the biggest number. So what's next? 301 to 400, 401 to 500, 501 to 600, 601 to 700, and finally 701 to 800. So now I just go through my list and I start counting. So up to 100 stops here, and then up to 200 here, up to 300,000, ooh, just to the edge, and then 300s, 300s, and here, then the 400s, 500s, and we just count them up. So it looks like we have two in the first group. The second group, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 in this group. Oops, come on, pen. And then the 200s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, if I counted right. 300s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, hopefully. 400s, there's 1, 500s, there's 3, there's none in the 600s and 1 in the 700s. And usually we add up those counts to make sure it is what our sample size is. So what do we get? 15, 16, 17, uh, 27, 31, 41, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. Yeah, it looks like it adds up to 49. So I set that up right. And then what we do is we turn that into a bar chart. So drawing to the best of my artistic ability. Hopefully I'm better than the pie chart I did earlier. Yeah, let's move this out of the way. So then we mark off our axis to indicate what we need to do. So we need to go 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800. And scale it. And then we'll have to mark off this axis. And let's see, we need to get up to 15. So maybe we could do 5, 10, 15. And we should label these. So these are, it's just a count, how many. Sometimes we call that the frequency. So I'm just going to call it count. That's a lame title. Let's try again. What are we counting? We're counting house prices. So we could do something like number of homes. And down here, this would be home price. And then we make a column for each of those. So the first column is only too high. So maybe that's about here. The next column was 15. And the next one was 14, just a hair lower. And then 13. And one. Then three. None. Oops, maybe we don't even draw that one in. And then one. So there's my histogram. So again, it's a bar chart. The, complicated thing about the bar chart is you have to decide how to group, and that is the hard part. So I'll show you another example in a minute where we'll look at the same data or another video about how to do this on a computer, which really makes more sense because the computer is pretty good at counting stuff like this. We just got to tell it what we want. So take care, do good math, see you soon, bye.